So I'm gonna put on my apron and have a chat with you guys while I make the ring. Let me explain what I'm doing, but also you guys asked a lot of questions. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to answer those questions for you guys so we can get to know each other a little bit better. So let's go. <laughs> While I'm doing this, I thought I would answer some of your questions. So, first question I did in my stories a little while ago was, where am I from? So some of you guys got that right, and some of you guys thought I was from England. Well, it's a little bit of a trick question, to be honest. So, I actually am from South Africa, but I lived in England for about nine years. So, yes, I probably have a bit of an English accent. I'm not very good at hearing my own accent. I don't know what I sound like. To my South African friends, I sound really English, and to my English friends, I sound really South African, so, yeah, no. Um, anyway, so, that is, yeah, that's where I'm from. So, I grew up in a teeny tiny little village in the middle of nowhere on top of a mountain, and I, yeah, and then I eventually went on holiday to visit my friend that I grew up with in South Africa in the UK, and then I never went home. <laughs> whoops <laughs> anyway came with my little backpack and then yeah just stayed but basically it was like a total miracle how i got to go there because when you convert rand into pounds they don't go very far so it was a total miracle that i managed to go because i really really wanted to go and my mum um had asked me for what, for what I wanted for my birthday and I said oh, I'd really just love to go traveling because at that stage I lived in Cape Town and my mom lived in Hogsback which is like a 17 hour drive away so I um, was like I just really want to go traveling like there's no point you sending me a bottle of honey like it doesn't really matter um, but I was like you know we're kind of dreaming together oh that would be nice yeah yeah anyway so then uh, about a month or two later my mom got a letter in the post written in French She's like, hmm, what the hell is this? And so she took it down the road to a friend of hers who lives on the mountain, who's actually Belgian. And she uh, translated it for my mum. And she said, it's legit. Like, I used to actually work for this company um, that does this. And it was basically, it was the French government paying out for damages from the war. So my parents on my mum's side are German. And my... My grandfather, her dad, had loads of companies in France and Germany and they got completely destroyed during the Second World War. So they basically just left in a hurry and moved to South Africa to start completely from scratch. Um, so yeah, they completely just lost everything. And then, yeah, so the, basically my mom got in touch with them and they paid her out. Like compared to what he lost, it was like absolute peanuts and a bit of a joke really. but. When you convert it into rands, it was quite nice. <laughs> and yeah, it was really, really wonderful for us. So my mom said, well, you know that trip you wanted to go on? This is not my money, this is family money. So if you really wanna go traveling, I would love you to have that opportunity. So I was over the freaking moon. And um, yeah, so planned a big trip and went to um, Portugal, went to, so met up with friends in different places. So went to Barcelona first, went to um, Barcelona, uh, Portugal, France and Germany, meeting up with people in different places, and then finally made my way over to England. This was supposed to be a month and a half trip. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I was just having such an amazing time and it just seemed like such an amazing opportunity to be able to be in Europe, which literally going to Europe equated with going to the moon for me so being there and being able to like explore and see so many different things was just like so amazing so I kept extending my ticket because I was like oh, I have to see this and I want to see that and you know so much more to do so I kept extending my ticket until I rang for the last year and I'd signed a contract to rent a room in some friend's house uh, in Newcastle and then my um then yeah, they they said, um, yeah, if you don't get on that plane, <laughs> your ticket expires. So like, I guess I'm going to be living here then. So <laughs> that's kind of how I ended up staying. <laughs> 
So, what other questions do we have? So, another question you guys were asking me was whether I prefer working in geometric shapes or more organic shapes. And to be honest, both. I first started off super organic, such as this, uh, but then I moved more towards geometric shapes. So I started off with, with organic shapes because I felt like they were a good comfort zone. So it didn't really matter if it was a little bit squonky or not completely perfect. So it kind of was like a safe zone. Then I did a project um, where we had to create something like using shadows and then turning them into um, turning them into a piece of jewelry. And my final piece was really, really geometric. And I really, really loved the result. And it just sort of was so like slick and clean, having such sharp geometric lines in it. So I just decided to experiment a bit more with that and get out of my comfort zone of worrying about it all. So another question is why I decided to start coaching. So that's a good question. Um, the reason I started coaching is because I absolutely love the kind of supporting other people. I really love teaching. I really love the engaging with other people. Um, Cause like making jewelry can be quite a solitary thing. If you're just at home at your bench and you're just, you know, making your jewelry. But I really do miss that part of the, the interacting. And I had that when I was teaching in, in London. So I'd, you know, have my social part of the, the day when I was at school teaching and so I really enjoyed the the teaching aspect there but didn't really enjoy having to like deal with the behavioral issues and writing reports and you know they're like not so fun part of teaching but the actual interacting I really loved but then I've also been teaching workshops for a long time um, and I really really love those so I kind of wanted to also just like change it rather than just teaching the skill because I know a lot of people um, a lot of people know how to make jewelry they're either self-taught some of you guys are self-taught which is amazing and hats off to you guys um, and um, I just know that like the whole business side of things was such a struggle for me when I first started out and there's just so much to consider and like branding and all of that stuff that they don't really always teach you on the course obviously depends where you studied and all of that but um yeah I kind of just felt like I wish that I had had more support with that when I started so that's why I kind of like do the YouTube channel so that you guys can ask you questions as well and just help with that side of things and then obviously the one-to-one -one is kind of an extension of that where I work more like directly with people and go through what specific things that you guys want to focus on and then um yeah kind of take it from there but i really do just i really do just love interacting with people and especially on something that we're both passionate about it's just kind of like a no-brainer for me <laughs> it's just doing something that i enjoy yeah it's great so and i get to help you guys which i absolutely love so seeing you guys thrive and watching your your businesses develop and watching your your instagram feeds um get more clarity and really express what your branding is about and yeah i think that that's why it basically because i love that um what else what do i prefer making earrings rings or necklaces well that's a good question um I am always drawn towards rings, as in I love making them and I love designing them and I love wearing them. But when it comes to making them for a collection, then I don't enjoy them so much because obviously you have all the sizes. So you have to make the same ring again, again, and again, which does get a little bit boring sometimes. So I prefer necklaces in terms of that. But I think when I'm thinking of a collection, I... I think I automatically think about the rings first and then uh, kind of take it from there. But yeah, I think I don't really have a favorite. Earrings, I would say, are my least favorite to make. I think because I kind of like always like get some earrings and I just love them and then I just want to wear them for like ages and ages where I feel like, I don't know, I don't know, I kind of... I like them all, really. <laughs> I'm not sure if I answered that question really well, but I don't really have a proper favorite, I think. But uh, yeah, so who is my role model in the jewelry world? That is another good question. And 
uh, yeah, actually it is somebody that I used to share a studio with called Emma Itchison. If you ever watch this video, Emma, hi. <laughs> um, so I used to share a studio with her in Hackney Wick um, and another lovely um, person, Vicky Myatt, who's from Promises Promises Jewelry. So both of them were super, super inspiring. Um, particularly Emma in terms of her ethical side of her business I found really really inspiring she's so passionate about it and just really went out of her way to make everything as ethical as possible so I learned quite a bit from her in terms of that um, and yeah I just found it really inspiring and just as a human we just got on like a house on fire and yeah then she moved to Bristol and left me, <laughs> but anyway, it's all good, um, we chat from time to time, um, but yeah, I just, I think her, just her whole jewellery business, her whole ethos, and just who she is, it's just, yeah, I find her quite an inspiring jewellery designer, um, yeah, very human, which I kind of think is like part of what I really always try and bring to my jewellery brand, is that it's, it's quite human and down to earth and all of that so yes um then why do i have so many plants in my house because <laughs> uh, uh you can never have too many um because <laughs> i love them and i'm from a little village with massive forest all around so it feels like my happy place when i'm surrounded by plants and yeah just uh, love them uh, we actually had a business, my boyfriend and I had a business called Plant Potters, so we started that uh, three years ago or so, we were selling products related to plants, so like plant pots, little propagation stations, uh, stuff like that, but we've kind of put that baby to sleep for now because we wanted to focus more on the jewellery for now, um, so we thought both of us focusing on one thing at a time is probably better. But um, yeah, our Instagram got uh, quite uh, a lot of followers uh, for what it is now. We haven't been really interacting with it lately, to be honest, but um, I think it got like over 200K followers in like a year and a half, something like that. What can I say? People love plants, <laughs> including us. Um, but, yeah, so we obviously learned quite a lot in that process of building that Instagram account and learning about the hashtags and, you know, like the kind of captions as well. Like we really learned how to do really good captions with that. Um, so I've kind of like transferred some of that, some of those learnings into my jewellery account as well. Um, but it's obviously a completely different story. But nevertheless, it is uh, it was good and fun. Um, yeah. And then what advice would I give to a new jewelry designer? Well, that's a good question. Mm, what advice would I give to a new jewelry designer? I guess just don't let like, don't let your fear of like what other people think of you hold you back. Like when I first started making jewelry, I was so nervous about what everybody else thought about me and my jewelry. And I thought, oh my God, I'm such a small little fish in such a big sea. And why would anybody want my jewelry? There's so many jewelry designers out there. And I kind of let that hold me back for a bit. And I was like, just like, oh, how's my jewelry good enough? Like, is anyone going to buy it? In the end, I just had to keep reminding myself that like, I enjoy this. So why deny myself of something that I enjoy so much? Because I have this idea that other people might be judging me. Like pff, one, you, nobody cares. <laughs> and two, like it's, you owe it to yourself to do something that you enjoy. And if you're passionate about it and you enjoy it, then who cares what other people think? And also I like to think of Bob Marley's quote where he said, you can please some of the people some of the time, but you cannot please all of the people all of the time. And yeah. Anyway, I'm not a major Bob fan, but that that particular little like snippet of one of his songs really, really stuck with me. And that really helped me in terms of like just being confident to do what I want to do and knowing that there are people out there who have a similar taste to me and a similar aesthetic. And then hopefully they'll like it and then maybe they'll buy it. But I'm not going to make jewelry that I think other people are going to want to buy that I don't like so I want to be able to comfortably and confidently wear my jewelry and love it 
because you know you're you're also a part of your brand and like if you're not even wearing your own jewelry because you don't like it then why so i think that yeah that kind of gave me the confidence to to just go for it and just do it so if you're if you're on the fence and you're wondering ah oh, do i do i do it is anybody gonna like it what is everyone gonna think really just don't worry about what other people think everybody basically is thinking about themselves i know it sounds ridiculous but if you think about it it's true like everybody is obsessed with whatever they're doing and what people think of them but if everybody is busy worrying about what everybody else thinks of them then actually everybody's just thinking about what they're thinking about and what other people think if that makes any sense so basically don't don't stress about what other people think and also it shows your confidence when you just you just show up there and you're like yep this is what i do this is what i'm this is what i'm about take it or leave it and i know that it's also really really scary when you first make your first designs and you you need to actually like take this little treasure that you made in your privacy of your little studio and you need to show it to the world i know that's also a really big scary step so just just don't let that stop you from actually making that next step. And if you're at that stage where you need to make a decision to go on to Etsy or create your own website or start selling it on Instagram, then just just do it. And the customer feedback is good because people will either like it or they won't like it. And it's good to have that feedback from the outside world because... Um, then you know if you're onto something because if your if your aim is just to make it and you know you're just you're just gonna make it for fun for some friends and some family and you you don't want to sell it then to be honest go ahead and make whatever you want it can be as wacky or crazy or as whatever you want but you don't need to worry about whether actually people are gonna buy it but if you do want to make it into a business and you do want to sell it then it's a good idea to actually make that bold step and go out there and show people um, because then you can learn from that and say oh people really liked it but maybe they thought it was too expensive or maybe they thought it was like absolutely way too cheap and a total steal and then you you know you can think about your prices you can see which kinds of people are drawn to which kinds of pieces um, so it gives you an idea of who your ideal customer is so that's a really important part of it when you're creating your business and you, you're, you're creating your branding and you want to you wanna make sure that people are going to buy it. You need to have a clear idea of who your audience is so that you're, you know you're catering for them in your Instagram feed, in your branding, on your website, so that you're speaking their language, so that you're, you're clearly for them. So people want to know, oh yeah, this is for me. But if it's a little bit all over the place and you're not really sure, or they're not really sure, Ooh, do I like that? Do I not like that? You know, because they're not really sure what it's about. But yeah, so that's kind of part of the advice. I kind of feel like I'm just rambling, but this is just really things that I really truly believe. Um, and based on my experience of having done this myself as well. So this video is getting really, really long, so I decided to stop it there and I'm going to answer the rest of your questions on Instagram. So keep an eye out there for your answers to your questions if they were not answered in this video. So one last thing, I want to give a little thank you to all of you guys for watching and subscribing and liking the videos and commenting. It's been really, really beautiful to see and I really appreciate it. It really helps the algorithm, so thank you so much. And thank you mum who does not subscribe or does not comment because she's not logged in. It's your birthday. Happy birthday, mum. I hope you're having a super lovely day. And I am sending you lots of love. And yeah, hope you guys have a beautiful, lovely Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll see you guys next week in another video. Bye.